God's blessings to you. Uh, as we go through another week of Bible study, I'm excited because we're dealing with walking in the supernatural. And I want us to understand something that a lot of times we can complicate that. I want you to understand that supernatural is above natural. And, 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 and if I can use a simpler word, uh, supernatural is the realm that we are in believer. Uh, as we approach God, God is a spirit. So another word that we can use in as, as far as walking in the supernatural is what we were using before walking in the spirit. And I want us to, through this study, learn that there's more to a relationship with God than having a church membership. There's more to having a relationship with God than just answering the question whether we're going to heaven or hell. There's more to a relationship with God than, than just praying and asking for things. Jesus says that I come that you might have life and that you might have it more, amen, abundantly. And, 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 and I fear that many of us just have a uh, traditionally held relationship, uh, which is really not a relationship, but our relationship is actually with the church body and not with God. Uh, there are many people who uh, they lack faith. They walk away from the faith because sadly they find uh, that, that there's nothing to this uh, traditional approach to religion. It's not helping them. They're not experiencing God. They're not walking, experiencing victory in their lives. They, they don't experience the peace of God in their lives when they go through things of life. We're all going to go through some things. Uh, but we learned here last week in our Bible study that when we go through, that God is with us. He's fighting our battles. Amen. So the first week that we looked at walking in the supernatural, we looked at walking in the supernatural uh, from the aspect of understanding what it means. And what it means is to be led by God, to move as God leads. And we looked at Abraham and how God told him to go to a place that I tell you to go, leave your family behind. And Abraham walked in the supernatural by going as God led him to go. Now, walking in the supernatural is more than, than, than blessings, and miracles, and favor, and all of these things that we love to talk about in the church. But I want us to understand tonight as we go into Scripture, Exodus chapter number 33, that uh, walking in the supernatural affords us so much more than things. So let's just look real quick, Exodus 33, um, beginning at verse number 11. Exodus chapter 33, beginning at verse 11, and it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face, as a man speaketh unto his friend. God, is a blessing just to read. And he turned again into the camp, but his servant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man departed not out of the tabernacle. And Moses said unto the Lord, See, thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name, and thou hast also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee. You ought to underline that, highlight that. I know some don't like to do that in their Bibles, but you ought to highlight that, underline it, or at least take this scripture and write it on a sticky note, a piece of paper, and I want you to remember this. Moses said, verse number 13, Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, as you said, Lord, Show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I might find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. 
And he said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, if thy presence go not with me, carry us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all of the people that are on the face of the earth. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken. But thou hast found grace in my sight. Check this out. And I know thee by name. Oh, God. And he said, I beseech thee. <laughs> Show me thy glory. God Almighty, the audacity of Moses to say to God, show me thy glory. And he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, thou canst not see my face, but there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. Thou shalt stand up on a rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passes by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will take away mine hand. Thou shalt see my back part, but my face shall not be seen. My God. Still dealing with walking in the supernatural. Tonight, I want to touch on the supernatural meeting place. The supernatural meeting place. See, we'll, we'll miss the blessing in this. We'll miss the blessing in the meeting place. Trying to get stuff from God. And how many of you know that when we come before God, we can only meet God in a supernatural place? I said another word that I would use for supernatural is spiritual. Supernatural meaning that it's above the natural. But spirit is going to give it more definition to the nature of, of, of our God, the nature of our relationship with God. And the nature of the new man. We are spiritual creatures. So I want to deal with the supernatural meeting place. I remember Jesus told the woman at the well that God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That means if you're going to approach God, you've got to approach God where he is. Not that God is not omnipresent, but God is spirit. And, and God invites us to have communion with him. God invites us to his personal touch. He invites us into the holy of holies. My Lord, I, I, I want to look real quick just to prove that, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 19 says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he have consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. So God has given us a divine invitation to come into the holiest of holies and enjoy fellowship of his presence. God has, his, and he has invited us, my goodness, to have an intimate relationship with him. Many of us, I fear, we are satisfied with association, but not fellowship. And because we get complacent and satisfied with association, we don't seek fellowship 
because we think association is fellowship. Let me tell you what I mean by association. The stuff we do for church, the fact that we're part of the church, we join the church, we got baptized, we can call ourselves Christians, so we, we wear the label. That's association. And many of us are satisfied simply just with the association with God. But I'm talking about fellowship. Fellowship. Fellowship where we have dialogue. I hear from you. I talk to you. I can feel your presence. I can see your hand at work in my life. I hear your voice leading me and guiding me when I'm suffering, when I'm lonely, when I'm brokenhearted, when I'm hurting, when I'm depressed. Lord, fellowship with you is what brings me up out of it. When you read through the Psalms that David wrote, David wrote many Psalms where he began telling about his predicament and how things were, were in a desperate situation. But then David begins to shift his conversation in the Psalm because David is reflecting on the fellowship that he has with God. And just knowing that David has fellowship with God is enough to know that whatever David goes through, David knows God is going to bring him out. Fellowship, I'm talking about knowing God intimately. No, even, even if you don't have a Bible on you and you're talking with somebody, your fellowship is so sweet with the Lord that, that his words just begin to well up in your spirit and you're able to pour out into somebody else and somebody else is able to be blessed because of your fellowship with the Lord. I'm talking about fellowship with the Lord to where you may be on, in the workplace and my God, because you fellowship with God all the time, it doesn't matter who comes around you. It doesn't matter what the talk is around the relation. I mean, around the workplace, you are able to be in a place of peace. You're in a spiritual cubicle with God. Nothing can get to you. Yeah, you, you're human. Yes, I, I do understand that. But at the same time, my fellowship with God is so sweet that I'm not worried about what happens around me. Because regardless, I'm enjoying the presence of God. In worship, we come to meet God in a supernatural place. Again, Jesus says to the woman at the well in John chapter 4, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We approach God in a supernatural, spiritual place. The problem, I believe, the reason why we don't walk away with a supernatural blessing is because when we approach God, we want to approach God on a physical plane rather than a spiritual and supernatural plane. What I mean is we come before God and all we want is what we want from God. God, I need some money. God, I need my bills paid. God, I'm looking for a man. God, I'm looking for a woman. God, I need a new car. God, I need a place to stay. When we come before God, we come to God with demands and requests. So we only know God on a physical plane. So the only way that we can see that God is with us or that we have any type of relationship with the Lord is if he answers our prayers for physical things. That, my brothers and sisters, is not the litmus test for how we know we have a relationship with the Lord. We, we, if you try to approach God on a physical plane, and that's the only thing that you want to do, the only reason why you go before God is because you need your physical needs met, then you will miss out on the spiritual blessing of just having a relationship with the Father. In our text, Moses is talking to God. Moses is saying, Lord, you, you, you're telling me that uh, I've got favor with you. You're telling me that I found grace in your sight. And, and Moses is saying, I can't do this by myself. I, I know that you've given me this great task. 
I know that you bestowed this honor upon me, but God, I can't do anything without you. I can't go by myself. And Moses makes the beautiful request that God go with Moses. Because this is what Moses says, and this is so powerful. Moses says, Verse 16, Exodus 33. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not in that thou goest with us? If God doesn't go with Moses and the children of Israel, they'll be just like everybody else on the planet. You win some, you lose some. They're just normal. But Moses acknowledges that he serves an extraordinary supernatural God and Moses knows that having a relationship with the supernatural God can make all things that seem naturally impossible possible Moses holding up his hands and as long as he's got his hands up Israel is winning even though they're outnumbered Joshua Caleb they they, they hold up Moses' hands when he begins to tremble, gets a little weak. And as long as his hands are up, the battle is won. Moses knows this is not because he held his hands up, but it's because of the supernatural presence of God with his people. Moses stands before the Red Sea with his people. The people are wondering, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? You brought us out here just to dig our graves at the Red Sea. God says, stretch forth your hand. What's in your hand? I got this staff. God says, stretch forth your hand. Stretch that rod out. And then the Red Sea parted. It didn't part because Moses stretched out his hand. It parted because the supernatural presence of God was with Moses. And at Moses' obedience to God, God moved. Moses had a relationship with God that was so sweet where Moses just knew that if he didn't know God's presence was with him, that all things could fall apart. That's why things fall apart. Not because God doesn't answer your prayer when you pray for all of the physical things, but it falls apart because we don't seek a divine connection with the Father. It's because we, we don't know uh, that the supernatural presence of God is right there with us and he invites us into his holy place just to have communion with him. He told us in the scriptures that everything that you need, he'll take care of it. He knows what you need because he's a good father. But he tells us to seek ye first the supernatural kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. If we can stop focusing on what we need physically and, 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 and focus on really what we need spiritually, because when you get that spiritually, your physical needs are taken care of. If we can focus on the spiritual, the physical is taken care of. So like I said, we approach God on a physical plane and nothing is going to work that way. But we need to be like Moses and seek to know God on a personal, spiritual, supernatural level. Look at what Moses says. <laughs> God says, you know what, Moses? I'm proud of you, boy. You, you, you asking for the right thing. Now, that's just me. That's Jacob 101. But, but God says, you know what? I'm going to grant you that. Now, God was already going to be with them. But. But to acknowledge to a man who seeks relationship with God that, that God is going to answer his prayer to be with him. My goodness, that, that's almost like a sign of approval. That is, that is, a, sign, that is a sign to say, uh, Moses, <laughs> you are asking for the right thing. And because you are, your prayers are answered. Moses Salt relationship with God. Look back at verse 11. Lord God spake unto Moses face to face as a man speaketh unto his friend. God knows us already. 
But do you know God? I ain't talking about do you know the name of God? I don't know. I I'm, I'm not talking about do you know Yahweh or Jehovah? I, I'm not talking about do you know church? But do you know God as a friend? See, God is taking pride in his relationship with Moses because Moses genuinely wants to be closer to God. And God speaks to Moses face to face. The Bible says like he's talking to his friend. That's the kind of relationship I want. So after God tells Moses, I'm going to grant your request. I'm going to be with you. Moses, I can just imagine him. Just, just, just getting all excited on the inside. Moses says, Whew, okay, Lord, show me your glory. <laughs> show me your glory, God. So, so God Almighty, Moses wants to know more of God. See, when we come before God, in the supernatural meeting place that he invites us, which is in his presence. His presence is in us. He invites us to come into the holy place. Okay? He, he, when we meet God on a supernatural plane, we don't meet God in the supernatural, seeking God to do stuff for us. We ought to be like Moses and be thankful that we have a connection with God, that we can even go in before God to a place where high priests who did a whole lot more than you and I have done to, 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 to be pious and to be pure, where, where they would fall dead for doing one thing wrong because of the blood and the flesh of Jesus Christ that was pierced for you and I. God invites us into the most terrifying, the most beautiful, holy place to commune with him. And we receive mercy when we come into the holy place. In other words, it, it, we don't just go in and say thank you for mercy and go out. But mercy allows us to enter in. And when we enter in, God is saying, now you can have fellowship with me. If we can go before God just seeking to have fellowship with him and not association, oh, my God, how much more will we see in our physical life when God manifests himself to us? See, see, when we pour out ourselves, empty ourselves of us, okay, and come before God saying, Lord, I, I can't do it like Moses. I can't do it without you. God, I need you. I need you to be with me. I need relationship with you. When we come before God and we empty ourselves and wait to be filled with more of him, oh my God. He'll show you his glory. And I'm not talking about you being in a rock and you looking at the hinder part of God, but God will reveal himself in our lives. I believe that. Scripture tells us, um, Jesus told us that, that he that loves me is he that keeps my command. If you love me and you keep my command, then me and my Father will love you and will reveal ourselves to you. So obedience is always going to be a part of that. Okay, when we look at Moses and Moses is... Um, in an action with God on the mountain, Moses doesn't go to God asking for things. But the first thing that Moses does in his encounter with God is he obeys the command of God. When he first meets the Lord in the burning bush, God tells him to take off your shoes. From off your feet, the ground you're standing on is holy. Moses obeyed. Okay, if he wants to, to, to be in the presence of God, you got to obey. Then we find Moses up on the mountain. He's not up there asking God to do things, but he's up there hearing from God. And God is giving Moses his commandments. Then Moses comes down. Aaron and the Israelites are having a party around a golden calf. Moses throws down the tablets 
that God gives him with the law. And Moses has to go back up on the mountain to get the law again. So when Moses is approaching God on the mountain initially, he's approaching God in obedience and in reverence and in fear. But as he walks in that obedience and reverence and spiritual health and fear, Moses grows closer to God. Not by making requests, but by hearing and obeying. Hmm? He grows closer to God. And Moses begins to want to experience more of God than he's already had. His relationship with God is so sweet that he wants to see God's glory. Tell you what glory is. You're looking at a bright picture right now because of the glory of the light that's shining. When, when, when I turn the power off to this ring light, the filament is still in there, but there's no glory. But when I turn the power on, there's a connection in the circuit. And when there's a connection in the circuit, the light begins to shine or the glory begins to be revealed. Amen. And, and, and so when I look at God's glory in my life, because I have a connection with God, I can see the brightness of God in my life. Moses says, show me your glory. That ought to be our prayer today. God, I want to see you in my life. I want to see you at work in my life. God, I want to know more about you. God, I want to be your friend like Moses was. Father, I just want to know you more. That's what I'm talking about, meeting God in a supernatural place. He invites us to have fellowship with him. We'd be foolish to turn down the invitation. For us to come into this knowledge, we'd be foolish to walk away and refuse his invitation to come into his presence. Moses understood, as I close, that he couldn't go anywhere, he couldn't do anything successfully unless God be with him. God granted him his faith, his, his request. That was his request. God, just be with me. Not God, I need some money. God, I need some friends. God, I need a house. God, I need this. God, I need that. No, Lord, I just want to be with you. And I want you to be with me. And his second request, Lord, show me more of you. That's my prayer tonight. And I pray that it's your prayer tonight as well. Lord, show me more of you. And always, Allow me to be in your presence. Thank you. God bless.